In this video, I'm gonna give you a plan for learning data science in the year 2024. Now watch till the very end, cause I'm gonna lay out the steps in order of how I think you should prioritize them and even some resources that I recommend. I'm Richard and this is Richard on Data. So one of the things that can be really intimidating for people just getting into data science or even people with a few years of experience is the sheer number of things out there that it feels like you need to learn. Should you learn R or Python? Should you learn Azure, AWS, or Google Cloud Platform? Or do you even need to learn any of those at all? And honestly, it's basically impossible to know every topic at a level that's going to get you every job out there. But ultimately, you want to give yourself a good foundation, learn some fundamentals, and set yourself up to have the best possible chance at as many jobs as possible. And that's what I'm gonna help you with in this video. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do that and take just a fraction of a second to smash the like button. And let's get to it. Now, one of the first things you want to do is think about what kind of data science job that you actually want. Do you have a particular industry that you're interested in? Because, and this is just an example, if you're interested in the healthcare, pharma, academic, or maybe financial sectors, you might end up using R. But by contrast, if you're in an engineering or tech company, you're almost certainly never going to use R. You're probably going to be an all Python shop. And do you want to go in the office or do you want to be remote? because if you want a remote job, there's going to be more of those out there, but those jobs are likely to be more competitive. So it wouldn't be a bad idea to start by looking at some of the jobs that you're interested in and just look at some of their descriptions and the skills required. Now it's important to note that almost every job is going to look a lot different in practice than what you see in the description and even in the requirements and qualifications. A lot of jobs will talk a big game about how many machine learning algorithms they want you to have expertise in, and then on the actual job, you're going to spend most of your time writing SQL. But still, if you're seeing certain topics come up again and again, like let's say Matplotlib, XGBoost, AWS, you might want to make note of that. Now I'm going to assume for the sake of this video that you're somebody who has some basic math knowledge up through maybe an intro calculus or even a pre-calculus level. And you're also somebody that has or is planning to have soon a college degree. I've made a video about this before, but it is possible to get a data science job without a college degree, but there's no question it will be a lot harder. So for those of you who don't have one or you're still in school, Finishing up and getting that degree is probably the single most important thing that you could do. And ideally, that degree would be in something that's at least somewhat close. So something like statistics, computer science, mathematics, even economics is fine. But then assuming you've got that degree in hand, what's the very first thing that you should learn? Well, believe it or not, the first thing I'd recommend that you get some experience with is ChatGPT. And there are a lot of reasons for this. First of all, ChatGPT is an example of what's known as a large language model or LLM. And if you're a strong data scientist or engineer, you might find yourself working on one of these sooner than you probably think. And it's kind of a useful thought experiment for somebody aspiring to break into data science or engineering, how exactly these things can come into being and how they might work. Hopefully that will be a little inspiring, but even beyond that, ChatGPT has enormous practical value. For one thing, there's tons of ways that ChatGPT can help you learn basically any topic a lot faster. There's plenty of videos out there I like on exactly this topic, and I'll have links in the description. But also, just generally, it's increasingly likely you'll be using ChatGPT or a similar LLM a lot at the job you eventually end up doing. So it's definitely worth investing some time getting really good at prompt engineering. Just keep in mind that while ChatGPT is enormously helpful for some programmatic tasks, it is not a substitute for actually knowing some of the core skills like the ones I'm about to get into. It does get things wrong, and when it does, it's really good at BSing, and you'll just generally think through problems a lot better if your abilities are strong on their own two feet. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about some of the actual data science content that you're gonna need to learn. I've always been an advocate for learning statistics first and foremost. And the reason for that is a programming language will sort of give you a how. Statistics, however, will give you a what. 
and the underlying business will give you the why. On one hand, you've got some seemingly pretty boring stuff like t-tests or distributions, but you end up working yourself up and learning tools like regression models or survival analysis. And these are some really practical things that you're probably gonna end up using all the time for solving real world problems. And not only that, statistics is gonna give you a great foundation for learning machine learning and AI. Obviously, statistics is an extremely broad topic, so you're going to want something pretty comprehensive for learning this. If you've already taken at least a few courses at a university level, you're probably in pretty good shape. If not, that's where something like Coursera or Khan Academy will come in, and I'll have some links to courses in the description. After that, you need to make sure that you have a solid foundation in SQL. The reason for this is because virtually all data that you'll encounter in the real world is going to be large and multi-relational. So you're going to need to get it in a different kind of format in order to be able to do pretty much anything with it. So you're gonna to have to know things like window functions, like maybe you have a data set and you need to assign a rank order to the rows. And you certainly need to know things like inner and outer joins. For SQL, a book that I highly recommend that really took my own SQL to the next level is The Guru's Guide to Transact SQL. Like everything else, the link to that will be in the description. Once you have your statistical foundation and you know SQL, it raises the question, should you learn Python or R? Now, this question has been around for nearly a decade now, and my answer to this has changed slightly over the years, but to me it looks like this. So in general, neither of these two languages are going to be rocket science to learn, but there's no question Python is the bigger and more popular of the two, and it's going to be used in more total jobs. So when in doubt, I have to defer to recommending that you learn Python. But that's not a rule that's necessarily going to just apply to everybody. For example, I get a lot of you tell me that you learned R in school. And if that's the case for you, you probably should just go ahead and get really good at R. And again, if you're somebody who's interested in a field like pharma or academic research, there is a pretty good chance that the people around you are going to use R, not Python. So if that's you, then I might deprioritize Python a little bit, because ultimately you do want to get really good at one of these two languages. But just know that overall, Python is going to increase your marketability a little bit more, and it's going to open you up to a ton of different opportunities. Now, everybody learns a little bit differently, and there's no right or wrong way to learn these languages. For example, some people might do better with books, some people might do better with courses. Either way, you are going to have to get your hands dirty doing some actual programming. It's not enough just to read a book or to watch a video about a programming language and then expect that you're going to retain it. You do have to write actual code. And that's where doing projects is going to be helpful. So there's tons of beginner projects out there on places like GitHub or Driven Data or Kaggle. And as you start working on a few of these, you'll start developing a little portfolio for yourself, which is really gonna help you stand out. So once you have those three things, statistics, SQL, and at least one of those two programming languages, ideally both, not to mention you know how to prompt engineer and chat GPT, you really are in an excellent position to break into data science. However, that's just for entering. Remember that learning never stops and experience is important. So you are going to run into a ton of jobs where these three things by themselves are simply not enough. You do have to be constantly upskilling. Now, I would let your findings from some jobs that you found that you're interested in kind of be your biggest guide here. But in general, here's some additional topics that I'd recommend getting good at. You want to know the way around the terminal on your Windows or Mac and know just a little bit of command line programming. There's all kinds of instances where you'll need to know how to do this, and just in general, it's really good for building intuition. You'll also definitely want to know Git and be comfortable working in GitHub. These are industry standard tools for version controlling code and collaborating with other developers, and they get used everywhere. And then machine learning is an obvious thing, which I'm going to put in its own separate category away from foundational statistics. So this covers everything from simpler algorithms like trees or ensembles of trees like random forests, all the way up to more complicated methods like implementing deep learning using TensorFlow and Keras. 
I will say that some people get a little bit carried away here, so I'd recommend not going too crazy with machine learning until you're sure you have all the fundamentals down. But there's tons of books out there that'll help you learn, as well as courses, just like any other topic. In particular, Andrew Ng's machine learning course on Coursera is highly popular and comprehensive, so that's probably the first resource that I'd recommend looking at. And then that brings us to the cloud platforms. So the share of companies out there that are developing and managing solutions on-prem is diminishing. More and more of them are turning to the cloud. And when I say the cloud, that's usually referring to one of three things. That's Amazon Web Services, that is AWS, that's Microsoft Azure, or that's Google Cloud Platform, that is GCP. This is one of the more difficult topics to get reliable experience in, unless you already have a job where you're working with that particular cloud provider. But like a lot of other things, there are options out there on Coursera or edX is another option where you can learn these. You start working in the environment and doing labs and you can really get some hands-on experience or even certifications. So I hope this has been a useful rundown and prioritized list of some of the things that you need to learn in order to break into data science. Now, if you're really disciplined, you can probably get a pretty solid grasp of the fundamentals in about six months to a year. But as always, your journey of learning is never gonna end, even if you're somebody who has 15 plus years of experience. So once you have the fundamentals down, keep on expanding them. The lucky thing is, in the year 2024, the resources to do so are basically endless. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, also leave me a comment down below. If you're somebody who's in data science now, tell me how you learned it. If you're somebody who's learning now, tell me the plan that you're working on. Then I'll see you all in the not-so-distant future. Until then, Richard, on data.